Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining in. This is uh, a real honor to be uh, hosting this panel. Oh wow, we have uh, Pam from Florida. Uh, we have people from all over, so it's been pretty fantastic. And uh, we have a wonderful panel that uh, I think, like I was just mentioning earlier, it's it's actually great to get uh, these four longtime supporters of the project to come together uh, on on a single share, uh, stage and kind of share some of the insights uh, in terms of how they have gone about building uh, the product, uh, the community, and uh, the company uh, in some cases around this. So it's uh, wonderful to have all of you uh, together uh, on the stage. And uh, thanks for all those messages. Keep uh, keep them rolling. Uh, that's always encouraging. I see people from Brazil saying hello. Yes. Thanks for folks from everywhere who are up in the middle of the night or up in the middle of the day or taking their time away from personal stuff and uh, joining this. So really appreciate that. I think we have a pretty tight agenda, so I'm going to uh, jump in. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, four wonderful guests here with us. Uh, I'm going to uh, not really spend the time introducing each one uh, together. Instead, I think we will try and take turns and get to uh, know each of them a little better uh, when we have specific questions for them. I hope that's okay. I'm sure everyone's read their profiles, so uh, you know none of these folks need introduction. But uh, I will I will uh, get to that in a in a few minutes. Um, so we do uh, just want to quickly acknowledge we have uh, Adam uh, here, who is the co-founder and CTO of Apply Tools. Uh, uh, he's a longtime uh, supporter of the Selenium Conference, the project, and the community. Uh, he's uh, been to the India Conference uh, a few times in the past. Uh, had the opportunity to meet him in person, but now we're going to meet virtually. Uh, then we have Dimil, uh, who is the VP of products at BrowserStack, and uh, he's based out of Mumbai, uh, very close to where I live. So, <laughs> But we always meet just online at the conference. <laughs> That's the irony of things. Uh, then I have Diego. Again, Diego is, uh, the, he just did the talk earlier today. And of course, uh, he is the staff engineer uh, at Sauce Lab. Also, uh, the project lead right now. I think, you, uh, Diego, you're playing the project re lead role, if I'm not wrong. Kind of. But I see you <laughs> uh, mostly there. Uh, and then finally, we have uh, Manish Sharma, who is the CEO of uh, Lambda Test, uh, and he has a very impressive track record, I must say. Uh, thank you for joining all of you. And Thanks. We're going to be here, and congratulations on the 20th anniversary. It's so exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, okay, so with that, let's kind of quickly jump in. Uh, broadly, I have uh, questions for you broken into three sections. The first section is a set of questions that uh, I want to ask uh, and maybe get everyone's perspective. So I would like each of the panelists to answer that. Uh, the second section of the questions would be specifically directed to uh, individuals and we would want to get a bit of an inside scoop uh, from you in terms of what's going on uh, you know, at your company and how you're thinking about this. And then finally, to wrap up, we will kind of broaden the perspective and look at a little bit of the future and see and would love to hear from each of you how you see uh, the, you know, the future and what is coming, right? With, with so many exciting things around this, I think uh, it's, it's a wonderful time to you know, think about what the project uh, future looks like and how this community is going to evolve. So let me start with uh, a little bit of an icebreaker kind of uh, questions, and uh, you know maybe we will uh, go in the order of uh, the you know same order like Adam, uh, the, you know just maintaining the uh, alphabetical order, so it's just easier and not confusing. Uh, and maybe for the last one we'll swap the order around, uh, and so we'll start with Manish and we'll go other way around. Okay. Uh, so, you know, the, the first question that I have for uh, all of you is essentially uh, maybe each of you could briefly, uh, you know, share how your company started contributing to the Selenium project and the community and, uh, you know, give us like a little bit of a scoop, uh, the behind the scenes scoop uh, from how did you get involved and how did your company get involved with the project? Yeah, so I'll go first then. 
if I understood your instructions yes. and patients correctly. Okay, so actually, uh, the genesis of Papitols is very much tied to the uh, growth of the Selenium project. We started the company in 2013. We just invented visual testing, which was a new thing. No one knew anything about it. And we made a decision uh, to build our first integration with the Selenium Java bindings. At the time, a tool called UHD that was owned by HP, uh, they acquired it from a company known Mercury, that you all know well how the Selenium name came from to fight as a kill for Mercury. That was the dominant tool in the industry. Uh, but although it was the dominant tool uh, in the market, we decided to place our bets on the Selenium project, which was uh, up and coming at the time, because we believe that it is, it is the superior solution, and evidently we were correct. Uh, so uh, we were in the early days, we had uh, no money at all, and we didn't know anyone that was using Selenium uh, to even uh, try our tool and give some feedback. So we went looking for a Selenium meetup, and we realized that there is no such meetup. So we decided to open up that meetup in Tel Aviv. And we ended up creating uh, the Israeli Selenium community in Israel. So basically, that's how it all started. Uh, this meetup uh, over the years hosted dozens of uh, meetings with both uh, local uh, speakers. And we got uh, international thought leaders to come and speak there. Me and my uh, co-founder, Moshe Milman, which ma many of you know, spent and other employees in Amplitude talked in, presented in numerous meetups and, and conferences. We've been sponsoring the project for almost a decade. And uh, in 2017, uh, we took ownership of developing the Selenium IDE project. And we actually re-implemented it from scratch when it uh, became it basically out of life into 2017 when Firefox uh, version 55 uh, was released. And uh, yep, so we've been very much involved. I can continue on and on, but I want to give some of the other speakers the chance to answer the questions. So but definitely, Applitos and Selenium has uh, rode the wave of success together in our initial uh, days. For sure. And that's, that's very interesting. I did not know that uh, the, the story about you putting your bet on Selenium. I mean, I knew you were in the original days kind of contemplating, but it's very interesting to know that you decided to put the bet on Selenium. And suddenly, I, I hope it's, uh, you know, proved out to be very well worth that. Definitely. I'm sure. Well, let's go to uh, Dimil and, uh, you know, let's, let's hear yep. from him. Yeah, Adam, it's very interesting. I've met Mush a couple of times. I think he never mentioned this, but really interesting insight uh, that he just shared. Uh, so for us, I think uh, we started, like we believe that we are the last mile deliverables for uh, Selenium Grid and Infrared. And I'm sure uh, so is very true with most of the panelists here. Uh, so for our contributions, I think I remember uh, starting with building Automate. I was in Selenium uh, Conf, I think 2013 as a speaker, Narish, when we were holding it in Bangalore in person. Yeah. Uh, and that jittery me uh, was probably uh, jittery at that point because I think my couple of my PRs were under review on the client side bindings of uh, Selenium. So we started with the issues that our customers were facing uh, at that point. And uh, probably me as engineer contributing and Nicole, of course, as founder, and maybe he was an engineer at that point, uh, started contributing towards the client bindings of uh, Selenium back in 2012, 2013. Um, uh, that I feel was the first nudge. We were underconfident because we didn't know how to contribute back to, uh, the community. I think most of the folks who start, uh, at that point, uh, first time, I think they, uh, do struggle with that. Uh, but once the first PR got approved, I think that opened, uh, uh the doors of confidence for us. Uh, I think that's where we started contributing heavily to back to the community in whichever way could, we could, uh, to the current dates of, let's say, uh, having David uh, Burns uh, and Pooja, both uh, part of the Selenium Core com uh, Committee and uh, helping the overall community. Uh, and more than that, that few early contributions to Selenium helped us contribute beyond uh, Selenium towards the open source community. So Appium became the next uh, casualty for my PR, if I can say that. Uh, but uh, that definitely probably helped uh, Browser Stack 
grow and uh, uh, grow from a perspective towards giving it to a broader uh, open source community and uh, selenium probably was the first stepping stone for us absolutely i know i remember meeting uh, you know both the founders nakul and uh, 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 again vitesh yeah. vitesh uh and i know we first interacted on the jquery project and then from there yeah. you know on on uh, you know selenium and then of course now on apm as well uh but yeah i mean i remember the 2013 conference where uh you know a lot of people were looking at how do we contribute to the project and that's where you know every year whenever we used to have the conference we used to have the one workshop uh, to encourage people in terms of how they can contribute to the project and uh, i think we've come a long way since then uh, but i'm sure uh, diego you would agree that you know we we need more help and more support in terms of growing the community so why don't you share uh, diego your story yeah uh, i think it's a uh, uh, i think it's a pretty good story because uh back when i was not at sos i was uh, looking for a new job and and then i then the story of how how sos that was started to contribute to open source was interesting for me just seeing that the jason huggins one of the co-founders was the creator of selenium then selenium and open source are in the dna of sos um and it kind of became a, a an incubator for open source projects because uh appium was also incubated in in open in in, in sos labs Webdriver.io has been the home for, uh, sorry, Source Labs has been the, the home for, for Webdriver.io for, for quite a while. We're still currently contributing to it. And when I went like to the company, learning more and more things, like the, most of the branding of the Selenium project has is because Source Labs has contributed that, like not only code-wise, but also in the structure of the project, making it more open. People who were uh, back employees in, at Source, like, like Santi Ordonez, different people who were part of. So this communion between committers and people in the project who also were social labs workers, were uh, 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 social employees, were like a, a way to mix those two worlds. And I think we shift away a bit of that for some years, but back in 2018, 19, we realized that we were not taking care of the project in a good way. So that's when, when Titus was there again, I, I joined SOS again, we created an open source program office and, and Basically, I could say that Source has helped like the, the 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 project come back again. And then I have to mention it as well that Brussels Tech also joined with David and, and Puja, and, and and this energy has helped the project grow again. And and we're looking forward to other vendors to come back again and and, and help us uh, continue that stream. So it, it's a big thank you to everyone. Perfect. Thanks, Diego. Uh, Manish, now over to you. I know Lambda tests relative to these folks is is a new entrant in this space, but in the last few years, I think you guys have done a very good job in terms of, of uh, you know contributing and pushing. So why don't you share some of your insights? Thanks, Nadesh. Great being here. You're right. I think as a company, we would be the youngest here, you know, just seven years old. But that's also a reflection on how the community has grown. I, there are so many you know, developers, testers, and organizations who have been using Selenium, and it continues to grow. You know, with with more applications being written, we're seeing the demand and the, the talent request for Selenium just explode. The way you know we think about it is the three C. I like to sort of simplify into you know content, consciences, and contribution. I think you know getting more and more testers and developers in the automation journey. We worked on ensuring that we create content, we create tutorials, we create documentation so that you know new people come and learn, especially students. Right? We, we spend a lot of time in doing you know externships with students so that they can embark on the journey of understanding what is automation and then how do you contribute back to open source projects. I think conferences have been key, you know, just like you know, what Adam said, going out and engaging with the community. And community is not, you know, a planet only. It's it sits in different cities. So going and doing these mini conferences in different places, evangelizing, you know, what is automation, what Selenium can do. It's not only one thing, right? It's it's an open source project which you can take and customize for your own use. I think that's something which we have been evangelizing with with a lot of folks. 
and most importantly, contribution. I think uh, contributing back to Selenium or any other open source project is gets a little fuzzy for people. You know, what does contribution mean? I think going out and educating people that, hey, you know, start off by just looking at, you know, what are the issues coming up? What are the feature requests that people are asking for? What are the documentation that you can go and contribute back into the project for? I think that's our way of giving back to the community. And I think, you know, what um, what my other panelists have been saying, I think we're just getting started. While Selenium as a project is celebrating its 20th year, I think now it's when it's going to explore. There's so much of code that is getting written, which would need to get tested. And it's just going to be a crazy, crazy fun ride. Cool. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Manish. Uh I'm going to switch gears a little bit and maybe move to the second set of questions. Uh, we are about 16 minutes into the panel, so I'm going to, uh, you know, increase the pace a little bit and would request we can uh, do a little bit more fire round kind of uh, questions now. So quick, short answers, if you will. Uh, let's uh, let's try that. So Adam, uh, you know, back to you, uh, you know. Uh, you you talked about how uh, you know Apple tools kind of uh, is is really a pioneer in the visual testing space uh, you know and uh, some of the original bets that you made and things like that but uh, can you tell us like uh, how did you see the integration of visual testing evolving with Selenium ecosystem what were your kind of uh, you know initial uh, maybe hesitations or concerns and how you kind of still went forward like uh, so just throw some light on the integration with selenium for visual testing point of view yeah so basically uh, as a company especially when you're a small company and you need to make a decision on with which you know framework to work it's a caution decision because you don't have a lot of budget you don't have a long lifeline and uh, if you make the wrong decision you might uh uh, be extinct, right? So, but it was kind of clear at the time that Selenium is on the rise. We looked at uh, Google, and we saw that the search trend is uh, uh, up and to the right. Uh, UFT Mercury is going down. It was just that way. We said, okay, we are going to stick with the leader. Uh, and uh, actually, I have to say, put us also to some of the things that Diego mentioned that reminded me that when we first, you know, came to the first Selenium conference, SourceLab was so like inseparate from this project. And I just thought, wow, what an amazing company. And, you know, I wish that at some point we'll be able to, to get to a point where we are so much identified with the project like they were at the time. So it really did a great job and it was an inspiration, inspiration for us as well. Now we built uh, everything that we've done uh, with visual testing. So I think that adding visual testing in general to the world had a huge impact on, you know, um, just about every team that is doing testing today. It brought a new dimension to testing. It allowed teams to be able to get more uh, return on the investment. It is well investment in test automation. And again, the, the goal, specifically with Selenium, it was always our most advanced SDKs, our most primary and go-to uh, platform that we made our technology available to. We try to make it as easy as possible to add uh, visual testing to your Selenium test, and we are still working on that today. Um, if we look a little bit into into uh, the future, um, in recent years we have been working uh, and focusing on building uh, autonomous test automation tools uh, uh, that added and expanded uh, te to technologies beyond uh, the traditional computer vision technologies that we have, uh, we are known for. And I think that uh, very soon you will see a lot of these capabilities trickling down uh, into the Selenium environment as well. So we already have to build an execution cloud that allows you know teams to execute a test at scale, but also provides themselves teaming uh, uh, functionality out of the box without changing a lot of code in Selenium. I think that uh, in the future, there, it will be easier to add a visual testing coverage to a test with less SDK involvement, with less tweaking, a lot more uh, autonomous decisions on what to test, how to test it, so it would be finely tuned and not dependent on the user writing the test up to a point where there will, not, there will not be a need to an SDK at all. We just run your Selenium test and you get the visual test coverage with AI deciding 
what to test, how to test, etc. This is the future that I see in our integration with Selenium moving forward. That sounds fantastic. I already see a huge impact in like, you know, earlier you to write multiple assertions in the test to make sure and both soft assertions and hard assertions and whatnot. Uh, and with introduction of visual testing, uh, you know, the amount of assertions as a, uh, you know, as one would need to write uh, have gone down. And what you're telling me is in the future, even those would disappear. And I would just mm-hmm. run my Selenium test and, uh, you know, let the AI decide what is worthwhile uh, inspecting, what is the right uh, algorithm to be used for doing the matching over here. Uh, none of that I would need to do. That sounds yeah. exciting. Of course, and we'll still have the ability to override that in areas where you think you know best. But the reality, you know, which you look at the multitudes of practitioners, the level of expertise is not even, and sometimes people just end up making wrong decisions that negatively impact their coverage or the amount of maintenance that they need to uh, uh, to handle, you know? So that would go a long way in making things simpler for most everyone. Sounds good. Looking forward to that. Uh, now we'll quickly switch to uh, the milk. Uh, so, Demil, you play, uh, I mean, you've obviously been a contributor, you've, uh, you know, on the project, and but you've also uh, now play the product, uh, you know, like the head of product role uh, uh, on browser stack. Uh, so, throw us some light in terms of uh, basically, you know, there is a certain vision you guys have in, in terms of how, uh, you know, you want to take testing. Uh, but there's also feedback that you're receiving from the community and especially the Selenium community is quite vocal many times. So how do you balance, uh, you know, the, the two, your own vision and the feedback that is coming in? How do you blend it? How do you prioritize? Can you just throw some light on that? So, uh, so firstly, I think Selenium is probably the biggest democracy uh, for testing community. I feel there are too many wide opinions and too many opposing opinions, which is good because... At the end of it, uh, the product documentation, everything is so awesome that uh, it just uh, makes Selenium the skill it is today. Uh, as Manish also touched upon, that Selenium has become a skill rather than uh, just a product project. So for us, right, it's difficult as a corporation, as a company, that of course you have to prioritize your local needs first. Uh, but as the DNA, I think uh, we extend one of our core principles: build trust and collaborate. So that's not only uh, within the company, but also we extend it to the customer and the community ad broad, right? So uh, for us, it's always been about uh, listening to what could we write uh, uh, for the customer and then making that tough call, whether it should uh, uh, be commercialized, of course, uh, as a corporation, that's one of the uh, goals that we have, or should it be for the greater uh, selenium good? It's a tough battle that I think we fight uh, uh, more often than not. I think, especially in my product role, I think it's been uh, uh, probably one of the most difficult battles to fight. Uh, but at the same time, I think we are wary of the fact that uh, uh, coming back to the point that it's a democracy, right? So we need to hear out the different opinions, uh, even though they are opposing to uh, our vision, our direction uh, that we are taking. Uh, it's far more valuable to create that impact and continue on the uh on the journey of probably keeping uh, open source projects like Selenium uh, uh, the go-to skill for any automation engineer because that will probably grow the journey and uh, the overall market and uh, we just need to focus on that last while delivery of Selenium as an infrastructure project. Perfect. Uh, and I know I, you put it very nicely but that challenge I, I, I've known that personally as well. It's Quite a hard challenge to balance and uh, kudos to you guys for kind of doing that day in and day out. It's not a, it's a very tiring job, I would say, to keep that uh, and stay on top of it. Uh, I'll quickly uh, move to Diego. Uh, Diego, uh, you touched a little bit upon something that I wanted to ask uh, that, you know, uh, Sauce Lab has uh, been at the forefront, uh, you know, when creating the, con- uh, the project itself, like with uh, Jason and other folks. Uh, and then there was a little bit of a lull in between, but now if you, you know, uh, as Sauce, you guys are all very committed. Uh, give us a little bit of an insight in terms of how does Sauce encourage developers to, uh, you know, like yourself and many others 
to kind of contribute to these projects like is there some special policy you know how do how do you guys manage how can we you know, this is more from a perspective as what could other organizations learn uh, so that they could encourage a very healthy open source contribution absolutely um i mean the first thing to note is that it is not easy at all because you know development teams have a sprint uh, a, 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 a specific amount of tasks to to tackle and it's very hard sometimes to find time to um, contribute to open source. So one of the tasks that we're doing inside source is um, trying to show everyone the value that uh, a contribution to open source uh, gives you. So for example, we have been able, uh, so one of the fortunate things I've done is that I work in the in the code base at source before uh, being 100% uh, devoted to open source at source. So I, I, I was able to learn how things work inside and outside. And when I was able to make a better point to, to, to tell them, you know, if we do this in open source, this piece of code that we have inside can just go away. It will help uh, the infrastructure be more uh, uh, more simple, I would say. So those type of things where we say, uh, if we had more people working in open source, if we understand how this and that works in the in the selling project or the app in project, uh, then this could help us to give a better experience for the customers because they don't have to go to the internal workarounds or to whatever piece of code we had to make something work in a, in a good way. So when we fix things at the root uh, in, the, in, the, in the project, then this enables a lot of people to do work in a much better way. And this has helped a lot because um, in some ways, uh, engineers are now more interested into uh, finding ways to contribute to open source. They're also more interested about doing uh, public talking. They're more interested into uh, like going to meetups and learn and meeting the community. So one of the big things that we're doing internally is that how can we get an engineer, a product person that works inside the product the whole time, meet the community and meet the project. And through that path of communication, things that are coming up in the in the testing world, they get a better understanding and they go to these events, they meet each other and they get all this information firsthand. So that's kind of the thing we're trying to do and motivating more people to to, to, to go out there. So this is also a message for, for all the ones that were like a, a cloud vendor, like this is a strategy that works pretty well. What's interesting is the perspective on uh, maybe looking at what could be, you know, something that you need to maintain internally versus what you could contribute back to the project and hence reduce the overhead on yourself and uh, maybe get in more interesting ideas from the community to improve your own product. I think that's very powerful because, uh, you know, uh, I always say code is liability, so the less it's better. <laughs> yeah, you would be surprised at the amount of internal forks that exist at companies instead of um, defining an open source contribution policy and contributing back to the project. It, it's it's incredible. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, Manish, I think we'll quickly come to you. Uh, I know you've uh, taken on this new role fairly recently. Uh, at Lambda Test, and uh, I was uh, just reading that one of, uh, I mean, you probably have like two big uh, missions. Uh, one is to basically improve the product innovation and also increase the outreach to all the stakeholders, uh, you know, that, that would benefit from uh, quality engineering and uh, all the related stuff. Uh, so how uh, is Selenium or other open source projects helping you shape your own uh, vision and in terms of the product uh, thinking that you have for Lambda test. Yeah, I think as I was mentioning, you know, we exist because of Selenium. That's how we started. Um, majority of our users and customers come from Selenium. But maybe the way I see it, you know, open source is like dark matter in the industry that we're in, the software industry. You can't quantify it, but it's everywhere. Even the Zoom session that we're doing would have open source elements embedded into it. But when we think about testing, you know, there are so many frameworks that are available and which sort of reflects on, you know, the persona of the developer and the tester. They like choice, right? Everybody wants to use their own language, their own framework. So to be able to provide that unified experience 
of you know be able to execute your test runs is something which is very important for us, and that's how we sort of build our features, our product, our platform. And this has come from feedback from you know users and customers itself. The beauty of Selenium is yes, it's open source and you know open specs as well. Many organizations have taken it and customized it. Right? As Diego was saying, there are so many forks. Right? It's it's not the standard uh, Selenium that everybody else is using. And what happens is everybody wants those tweaks, but they want to it to run it in the same way as a standard Selenium would. In fact, many of the test authoring tools that are out there in the industry have taken Selenium and created their own, you know test automation framework on top of it. So have so many system integrators. And so you have so many variations. And if you go to any enterprise, any customer, they end up having, you know, so many different variations of open source frameworks that they use. So for us, our guiding principle is, you know, to abstract all of this, uh, because in the end, you know, what is a tester looking to do? Find faults, find issues, find bugs. So to do that, you know, abstract everything, help them run seamlessly, help them triage quickly, help them become more productive. And I think what we're seeing is with, you know, Adam also talked about autonomous testing. There's a lot of autonomous code generation that is also going to happen, right? It's, it's already starting to happen. And this would require a lot more new features from the Selenium project itself because software industry is changing so fast, you know, how do we keep up with that? And this feedback that we keep getting from customers because they're trying new things. You know, they want to use, you know, the the automation framework for testing devices. They want to use it for IoT. They want to use it for custom applications. All of these feedbacks are going back into the product from how can we simplify the life of a tester and a developer to improve productivity. So that's the, you know, vision and drive that we have. But at the bedrock, it's all open source, right? Because, you know, whether you are testing, you're building, you're integrating, you're deploying, all tools in the industry are based on open source. I think the very important point that you talked about, which often a lot of executives do lip service, but don't really do a great job, is just that seamless developer experience, uh, you know, or seamless engineer experience so that, you know, they can do what their main job is and not just spend a lot of time yak shaving and, you know, integrating and spending all this time because that's just uh, not a productive use of time. And with as uh, autonomous things and as AI kicks in and as many more things will kick in, uh, this is just going to get more and more complicated. The surface area is going to keep increasing. So trying to make sure that the abstraction is right and there is a great level of developer experience, I think would be very, very important to all of us. Uh, and we look forward to that experience. I think I'm just looking at the time. Unfortunately, we uh, you know we have a lot more questions, but I think we've kind of uh, ran out of time. But uh, I hope uh, you know we were able to touch upon some of the interesting things that you guys are doing. At least I have some interesting takeaways from this. Uh, so... I think with that, we will wrap up this panel. Uh, we have uh, another panel with the computers that uh, we need to join quickly. Uh, so I want to just uh, take a minute and thank all of you for making the time today to join this panel. Uh, your, uh, your being here is very, very important to the community. Seeing you all together is fantastic. So uh, thanks again uh, for uh, joining the panel today. Thank you, Narish. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day and uh -huh. a good conference ahead.